Gable was just <laughs> training to come back this earlier this year. I was secretly practicing um, at the university to come back. Dude, Dude, you were I, meant for WWE. <laughs> I just know how to take guys down 20 times. If I, if I had one thing to say to the people that watch this video, man, I would say... All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Clash of Combat. Uh, Gable, why did you accept to do this podcast with us? Man, what's up? Clash of Combat, we are here. First podcast ever. Yes. Yep. No, thank you so much for having us. This is amazing and can't uh, wait to dive in, learn so much more. I about appreciate you, so. you guys for driving for sure. This is, uh, is going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, first off, like, just want to talk about uh, your journey. <laughs> Did you hear him fart? No. <laughs> 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 Nobody heard that? I didn't. Okay. So, <laughs> wait, you, you got Stitch and Rocco. This is, yep, yeah, this is Stitch. He's, uh, he's three years old. He just turned three March 3rd. Okay. And Rocco turns one, I think April twenty first. So he's coming up. Oh, nice. He's, he's a crazy one. Yeah, he's a crazy one. He um he's like thirty one pounds right now, and our French yeah. bulldog weight should be about twenty five. So <laughs> he's got to get on that diet. Yeah, he's a big boy. Yeah, he is. But they got a problem with farting like at random times. So if you hear like a little squeak, is one of these. let me know what it's from. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So in like maybe just about a sentence or so, how would you describe Gable Stevenson? Or give your give me your elevator pitch. What'd you say? Man, how would I describe Gable Stevenson? I think I would describe Gable Stevenson as um, fun, energetic. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the outside world would say. They might say I'm cocky and arrogant, but you know, that's just the sport that we're in. But yeah. I think um, fun, energetic, like to do a lot of things, um, mm -hmm. easy going, work hard. I mean, can't get can't get any more than that. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's what's up. Um, so we had a we had a little bet on the yeah. way here. <laughs> What was uh, <laughs> who you think could last longer, like in a match? Us, like you versus one of us. Who would you <laughs> <laughs> like a real world match? Real yeah, world match. Real as hard as you can. Like you're going, like you're going for the it's pin. It's a duel. You need a pin. Duel. You need a pin. I don't know. Let me let me get a good look. <laughs> I'll probably, maybe him. <laughs> you'd pin. You'd pin him the fastest. Oh, pin oh. him the fastest. I'll probably pin him the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's just Brady behind the camera. He said he was trying to tell me that I was like, "There's no way I could last a minute," and he was saying he was what? like, "He was like, I could last a minute for sure." You know what's crazy is we we are gonna find out today though. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. we're gonna find out we're today. Gonna like, who can last the longest? <laughs> oh my god, that's not crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. We, when we were we were talking about these questions, I brought that up. I'm like, wait, maybe we shouldn't say it like <laughs> we that. Say we shouldn't say it like that. All right, we all gotta right, say yeah. pause right quick. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but we good. <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. goodness. <laughs> Wow. Well, how was the drive though? Drive was good. We stopped at Denny's and had some some good foods. So. What what like what is your order for breakfast food? I love pancakes. Love That's to get all? myself some No, I get hash browns and okay, I want okay. a toast today. The toast was very <laughs> mid, so but I love my pancakes. Love to get myself some pancakes. How many? Three, four? <laughs> no, I was good with two. <laughs> Come on. I was good with two. I wasn't yeah. even that hungry. Cross, we got the the Grand Slam burger. Yeah, Grand that Slam thing, burger. It was it was so good, but it like it was so greasy. It just went right to my stomach. Yeah. You got a burger in the morning? No, it was a Grand Grand Slam witch. Oh, so it was like <laughs> so it was yeah. like the egg and the bacon. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Well, was it bagel or toast? Toast. Yeah, I mean, it was like we'll roll with it. What, you are you a big breakfast guy? And mm, coffee drinker. So I just started getting all of that like. I like to, so I can only drink coffee if it's like got the froth in it. Yeah, you know yep. when you you get the mm -hmm. whisk and you yeah what put that? it up. One hundred percent. The nice sweet ones, <clears throat> super sugary. It makes it look good. But makes it look good. It's not even coffee. It's just straight sugar. Oh, or it's like it's not even black. It's like just white coffee. No, it's like, <laughs> you, like you put the cream and like a um, froth. Cold foam. Yeah, it's cold foam. foam. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't drink coffee, so I have no idea. Hey, that's the only <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah, sure. Only way, or it's got to be an espresso. Okay. That makes sense. But breakfast food, I think um, if I'd go with the breakfast option, I'd probably do, man, it would got to be eggs. Yeah. It, no, it's always an omelet. Build your own omelet with two sure. pancakes on the side. So the omelet has to have no cheese. I don't like no, no cheese. No cheese. No cheese, no onion, uh, peppers, spinach, m onions, bacon, mm -hmm. mushroom. Dude, um, that is pretty loaded. And that's it. That's it. Sure. How do you I'll get all that no cheese? <clears throat> Cheese is terrible. <laughs> Dude. Cheese is like the worst thing on this earth besides seafood. <laughs> worst thing on this earth? Yeah, besides seafood. But cheese curds. Mm -mm. Good thing really? you're not from Wisconsin. Yeah, good Wisconsin. thing you're not yeah, from Wisconsin. That, that Wisconsin is a little different. You guys could keep the cheese over there. But <laughs> yeah. I do have a weird thing where I, can, I can't eat stringy cheese. Mm -hmm. But like if you have like a charcuterie board and it's like the hard cheese that's warm, mm -hmm. I can, I'll eat it. But Okay. So have cheese you, might not be the worst thing on this earth, but it's, it's pretty low. Yeah. It's pretty low in yeah. my eyes. Have you been to like a Culver's? Uh, it's been a minute, but yeah. You didn't get the cheese curds there? No. 
That's crazy. I don't like no. If I if I were to try like a real cheese curd and someone like made me yeah. do it, like had me tied up and tortured me saying <laughs> eat a cheese, that. it would have to be like a real deal, like out the fryer, really? so yeah. I can get the real taste. Because like wow. Culver's is just gonna give you the this the um. How am I supposed the greasy kind? Yeah, they're just gonna yeah, throw it sure. in and just that be like, sense. "Hey, what's up? Come that eat it." Sense. And I don't want to do that. Yeah, right. I think we should listen to it too. <clears throat> Win Olympic gold or cheese curds? Yeah, <laughs> stay away from cheese curds. That's a good <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess my biggest question for you, like regarding your jump from your freshman year, like to your next year, is like <clears throat> you just grown as a wrestler, and I think I'm sure even as a person, because I think it was more of a lifestyle change. Mm-hmm. Can you kind of talk about that? Like, how could you make that big jump? I think, um, or even just going from high school <clears throat> to college. From high school to college, it was uh, it was probably the biggest jump I ever had in my life. Just because being able to understand that college is a different game. I mean, you got you got so many distractions now. You got parties. You got people wanting to hang out with you because you're the athlete on campus. And so when I first showed up to Minnesota, I was like, I, I was talented, but I didn't know how to work hard. And so I tell I tell people all the time, like once you bridge that gap of talent and progression and working hard, you can go forward and. After losing my freshman year twice, and I was in the feeder whole year, no one in the country, I was like, this guy did everything right, and I was not doing everything right. And so that switched my whole game plan. That switched my whole motive to like, hey, you got to you gotta eat good stuff. You got to hang out with good people. You got to <clears throat> get away all the distractions. You got to get away from the parties. I mean, my first time when I wrestled Oklahoma State and they pulled my red shirt, I was at a... Um, a little frat party the night before to like 1 a.m. <laughs> sure. And Jeez. then I showed up to the duel and I won. And I beat the number three guy in the country like eight to two. And at that <sighs> point, I was like, <clears throat> at that point, I think it was Derek White from Oklahoma State. And I was like, yeah. geez, like, this is like the same as high school. And then as the season went on, I wasn't ready to like go mm-hmm. through the grind. And we hit Big Ten season. I was like wrestling number three, number four, number five, week in the weekend. And I was wearing yeah. myself out because I was trying to get 10 takedowns. I didn't know how to ride. I barely knew how to get off bottom. I just knew how to take guys down 20 times. <laughs> and so from from freshman year to sophomore year was the, probably the biggest gap ever just because I went from being talented and being good with being Gable Steveson to getting to the next step. And then it was like, now it's Gable Steveson. Now he's working with talent on top of it. He's going to take this and run with it. And I think people finally saw the gap of when it started to yeah. come, and I definitely noticed it too. Mm. Interesting. That reminds me of like uh, – you ever hear like John Jones earlier in his career when he was like <clears throat> partying, Psycho. yeah, crazy like, man, doing but cocaine he, like the weekend what? before a so fight? Good, though. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. he'd go out and just destroy people. I did not even know that. <clears throat> yeah. He said like he had to do it. It was like a part of his process. Regimen. Yeah. And I and I had a regimen too. I would just go hang out at like Thursday at like a little like eighteen plus place, and I would come home and <clears throat> we'd have a do on Friday mm-hmm. and we'd have a do on Sunday, and I would just beating guys twelve to two, thirteen to four, Jeez. majoring people, and then. <laughs> I finally hit the wall where someone was doing everything right, and it was mm-hmm. like boom, slap in the face, yeah. and I was like, mm, no more. And after that, like I stopped going everywhere. What? How do you think you have that dominance? Like, <clears throat> is it just because? So I um I did a video with Spencer Lee last year, and he just said he blamed a lot on his genetics. What would you say? Like how just dominant you are compared to everyone else? <clears throat> is it just your work ethic? Is it just talent? I would say genetics is definitely a part of it. Just having that natural athleticism at the as a big guy, yeah, definitely helps. 100%. But you, you get to the point where everybody's the same, <clears throat> and when you get to the NCAA tournament, you got you're in the quarterfinals. This guy is practically the same as you. It's just who has more in the heart to win. And so once you hit that point, it's all it's hard work or nothing. Yeah. And so after that freshman year, I like bridged the gap of like we're gonna go two a day every day, and like I found a schedule that was right for me. And when I found that, I was like. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. See how it works. And ever since then, I stuck with it, and I just kept going. I just slowly kept making the climb. And like, I think people started to notice, like, okay, Gable's starting to get away from the pack. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Um, college wrestling was getting a little bit to a spot where like he was dominating guys, and he was proving that he was he, he was worth it. Mm-hmm. And once I got to that point, it was like I started noticing, and that's mm-hmm. when I started to like <clears throat> change from a, a heel. My freshman year, I was kind of being, I was kind of arrogant to a lot of guys, and I and I could say that out loud too, but once I hit that spot of, I need to be a face for Minnesota, mm-hmm. and I need just to be maturing. A, yeah, I need to be a mature face for Minnesota, and I needed to talk well, I needed to look right, and I needed to, um, smell good, and do yeah. all the extra stuff that that people wanted to see. And so when people showed up to the sports pavilion, I was fresh with a haircut, talked well, 
walks with a good demeanor, had that aura, and people were like, yeah, that's, that's what you want to see. And so when, when people started giving me that, I was like, I ran with it. Yeah. I always see you with a good haircut, too. Yeah. Just, Dude, so I, we're just talking yeah, about We were this. just talking about the time. this. How, how often do you get your hair cut? Man, I really, probably, I was doing once a week. Holy he makes fun of me for God, as much as I do. I only like go twice a month. Twice a month. And twice it, a sometimes t- it grows back in the, fe- in the back, but now I'm like bald back here. Man, once so a week, I had a, um, my friend was cutting my hair. Yeah. And so he was really good. And so he moved to Las Vegas and he was, um, he would come over like once a week. I'd be like, yo, we got to do a Sunday. Come over Saturday <laughs> night. So he would come over Saturday night, cut me. And every yeah. time I went on the mat, a fresh cut. Like, That's so sweet. You don't miss the Afro? <clears throat> no, I hate it. Really? I hate the Afro. Just like, because of like how, like who you were when you had it or just I in mean, general? Who I was when I had it and, and me cutting my hair makes me look more like a man. It makes me look mm, more presentable sure. to yeah. the public eye. I didn't want people to see me as this kid that had floppy hair and he was talking to talk and right. walking to walk. And now people are like, oh, he's still a kid. And yeah. so when I cut it down, I was like, <clears throat> I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to change everything. I'm going to look right for the outside people. Mm-hmm. I mean, people come to the duels to see me win. They don't want to, I don't want them to come to see me lose. Sure. 100%. And so I cut it all down and I was getting cut every week. That's every it. week. I like, I needed it. It was a part of the process. I would show up every duel. I had new pair of white in flakes. Mm-hmm. Um, new? New pair. Every duel. What? <clears throat> Did you yeah. like you out of the box? Out of the box, I never, I never um, broke them in. I would take them out the box before yeah. the match, put them on, tie them up, cut the cut the laces. I didn't, I didn't like the the strap, so I yeah. cut the strap and I would tie my laces. I would wrap them around the back, yeah. tie them up front, put a little tape on it, and I had a new white pair every where, time. Where do you put them when you're done? I practice with them, mm-hmm. and then once they get beat up, I like hand them off to somebody that needs them. Sure. So you, just, sorry, do you get them like from the? School or you pay? In the school, yeah. they just give you like unlimited shoes. So I was and getting like shoes. Do you after want shoe benefits? Shoe. Do you want That's benefits? Crazy. Some 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 shoes I was wearing like a, a couple of duels at a time, but I would only wear them to duels, and then I would show up. Uh-huh. I'll wear them in practice for a little bit. Someone would be like, "Hey, my my brother needs a pair of shoes," then I'll hand them off. Be like, "Here you go," and he'll get a new pair of flicks. That's what if he's going out and selling those shoes? <laughs> hey, that's not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> it's a thought that counts. So I always had a fresh cut. I always had. New inflicts every mm. single time, um, cologne, everything. Mm. Like it was the a, it was, it was a part of like how to be fresh. And if I could give a class on how to be fresh before a duel, I think everybody would get an A because I'm teaching. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh like the, usually you hear people doing like I wear the same pair of underwear, <laughs> like same stuff over and over. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. I had a rotation. Like, like you like do yeah, new no, stuff every I know, time. Yeah, I had to like. And the egg them in them would ask me what singlet you want to wear. And I always had the gray singlet and because the gray singlet like looked the best. Yeah. And so when we got to the finals, he was like, you want to wear the gold? And I was like, nope. And he was like, <laughs> okay, you're just going to change the whole world. And I was like, yeah, we're not wearing the gold no more. Because I lost in the gold singlet once. Yep. And I was like, no more gold. And after wow. that, I never touched a gold singlet. Wow. And so like I had like a, I had like a plan of every single, every single thing I'd done. Mm-hmm. It was well, step one, step two, step three, we repeat. Wow. I had a certain warm up. I had a certain like walk. Sure. I had a certain talk when I talked to the cameras. It was, I was like a straight character the whole time. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's what people say, like having a pre-match routine, doing the same thing. That's going to have like the benefits. And I never listen to music. Really? Never. Not once. Mm -mm. Hmm. I would walk, I would walk out there just to hear the crowd roar. Yeah. And I'd be like, okay. And I'll walk (laughs) back. I like that. You were meant for WWE. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the whole, the whole, like, bro, I love the crowd. making up a personality. I, love, I made up everything, like mm. how to stay fresh. Like I had an underwear rotation of like these Lululemon um, medium shortcut ones. Sure. They came with black, gray, blue. I had like two sets of them every single time. Uh, morning, I wore the black ones. Mm-hmm. Afternoon, I wore the other black ones, and then I would just keep rotating. Then I wash them, wear yeah. them again. <laughs> And by the time I hit day three, I was on the last pair of underwear. So I, I had my clothes rolled up because if mm. you fold them, it kind of take a little bit of space. So yeah. I'd roll them up, put them in a bag, mm-hmm. come out there. Um, and I knew what's underwear I'd wear each match and boom, boom, boom. Damn. And I was like, wow. yep. If, if some matches weren't as tough as they were, I would put on a different set and change it. But I had it all. I, like, wow. It was like a whole plan. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, about your, your college loss. You ever wish you could get that one back? <clears throat> no. no, I don't. I don't look back at it and be like, no, I, I don't. I don't really care. Mm. At the time, I was like, 
shit, maybe. But as as time went on, that was the that was the best thing to happen. That was the best thing to like slap me and be like, you're not even the best, and you're yeah. not even close. So once that happened, keeps you I, humble. Yeah, it, it definitely it definitely set my whole world back because I was I was talking I was talking that talk the whole time my freshman year. I was like, no one can beat me. I'm gonna win four NCAA titles, and I was damn close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was I was talking to talk, walking a walk, and I came, got slapped in the face, <clears throat> set me back, and I started everything changed right after that. Like my whole life revolves around that one L. Like mm-hmm. everything does. Wow. Well, I mean, that's what I say like, all the time. Like my losses, probably the best thing that could happen. Changed best me and thing, humbled yeah. me and made me work harder. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Definitely hundred yeah. percent. Well, what about uh? Let's just make a dream scenario. <clears throat> Dream scenario, okay. This is just me from like an MMA fan yeah. perspective. So Anthony Kassar is obviously <clears throat> turning into going to MMA. Mm. So let's say someday along the line, after you're, you become a five-time WWE world champion. That's correct. You, That's correct. You transfer over to MMA. Yep. You already got all the skills. Mm-hmm. And he's in the UFC. You sign with the UFC. <clears throat> and the fight makes sense. Would you want it? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Or entertain it? Yeah, because there's a story behind it. If, if like we talked about earlier, if yeah. you if you put a story behind something, people are gonna buy in. And my job is to give myself the biggest run possible. But also, my job is to, from a viewer standpoint, I think about it from a viewer standpoint too of like how people would perceive me and see me. Mm. And so when I went out in matches, I would like do crazy stuff on purpose just so people would take it and put it on Instagram. And now people <laughs> see like. A video of like, hey, who's this kid jumping over somebody? And now, like, everyone's curious. And so I always thought about, like, what... It's not like I cared about what other people thought. Mm-hmm. It was like, how can I make something happen that they would, like, see it and be like, damn, like, who is it? Who is he? Yeah. And speaking on the UFC question, it's like, I wouldn't mind. There's a story behind it, and it would sell. As long as it sells, you're going to like it, you're going to like it, you're going to like it, and yeah. I'm going to get... My, my portion from it and we're all gonna have a good time so it's like yeah. but obviously you, you want to win right and I want to win too and the more you win the more people respect you mm-hmm. and losses come with it too and that's just a part of the game we play it's yeah. like you can't run away from it oh it makes sense one thing um I just gotta ask you as well like being how young you are winning national titles mm-hmm. winning Hodge trophies winning Olympic gold in the WWE now mm-hmm. like do you ever feel like you're almost just like I did it all like what like what, would you, what are your thoughts on that? Or are you just starting? Like, man, I'm just starting. Yeah, like I'm hungry. Like, yeah. this getting after the Olympics, I became even more like hungry, and it really? was like, because I went on like a little media tour and I was talking to Bellator and like UFC and <clears throat> PFL and WWE. Yeah. Um, so it was cool to see like you finally get your respect as a wrestler because when guys win the Olympics and they go back to square one, we're back training and we're going for the next Olympics, but. Mm-hmm. When I won, everything turned upside down because now it was like, um, it was like here's a kid that could be the next face of a company. Sure. And I took it and I was like, I got to do it. I was like, there's no other way. Mm-hmm. And everything at that standpoint after the Olympics, like uh, the Trevor Brand would have my phone in the bag, and I didn't turn it. I didn't turn it off just because I was like, whatever happens, happens. And he was like, your phone was buzzing so many times that like I had to <laughs> shut your phone off. That Jeez. was right after the games. And I didn't check my phone for like 30 minutes. And when I got off, the Jeez. first people I called was like my mom and dad. Sure. And I FaceTimed him. I showed him the medal. We were laughing and stuff. But it's like um, the game changes once you, once you hit that step. And sure. I feel like in amateur wrestling, yes, I've hit that step of like you hit the peak mm-hmm. because guys go – 25 30 years without without touching an olympic games and here i was at 21 years old i won and that just made me thirsty for even more because now it's like can you win again? what else can you do it's like yeah. what else can you do he's so young can you do it again and i was like yeah i can do it again you want to see <laughs> me do it again i was like i'll do it that again so, i just got chills that's so <laughs> i'll sick. do it again like and that's i awesome. i go hard every day because if that time comes i'm gonna yeah. look her right in the face i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna run through the wall again yeah well how you're saying you were just training um can we talk about that? What we were talking about yeah, earlier? Yeah, talk about it, yeah. Yeah, so Gable was just <laughs> training to come back this earlier this year. Yeah, talk about a little bit about that. I was secretly practicing um, at the university to come back um, and wrestle the national tournament. So I, I was I was ready to go, and I just didn't go. 
Wow. We'll just keep it as that for now. But yeah, we'll keep it as that. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I was practicing every day. Like, my lungs were ready. I was going to do a few duels at, um, they had a duel at Purdue at home, and they had Michigan State at home back-to-back, -back, and then they went to Big Tens in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I was getting ready to show up at Purdue, wrestle that duel and wrestle the next duel, and then show up at Big Tens. Yeah. And I was ready to go, and then it just didn't work out from there. But I, I do still have a year of eligibility. I have a sixth year. But that's a that's a story for sure. when that day comes. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah, in I another storyline. Right, that's another another, story another, another timeline. Yeah. Gable would have came back and wrestled line. this year, but dang. How do you feel about your like rival getting the Hodge Trophy this year, or some people would say it was your rival, but you? <laughs> I know, I know. In the interviews, you said like this was no <clears throat> rivalry. I, at the um, at the time, you know, I try to I try to once, once we go out on the wrestling mats, it's a business now. Like, mm. is is you or me do or die? I'm not gonna die that day, yeah. so you gotta go. And so, once you once you make things personal, it, it hits on a different level. And I showed up to wrestle. Nick Gwazdowski at the RTC Cup in yep. 2020 when COVID was still going. And I was like, hey, I'm coming. I'll only wrestle Nick Gwazdowski. And I got my match. I won. And I just wrestled Jordan Wood the day after because Egan was like, hey, we need you to wrestle. And I was like, yeah. okay. He was like, I know you didn't want to. And so I wrestled and everything was good. <clears throat> and then I go on, I go on Twitter the next day and it's like, I go on Twitter the next day and it's like, someone's calling me out saying oh he was ducking mm -hmm. and I was like if you knew the real story I wasn't ducking and so once you make things personal with me I don't mind wrestling anybody and doing anything but once you once you say I'm not doing something have you watched the last dance by Michael Jordan yeah, yeah. No, I haven't. <clears throat> you watched I, it? Yeah, I like it. every little thing that triggered him mm -hmm. to made him like go harder and like he said Charles Barkley scored 37 points in a game on him one time and the next game he showed up and he scored 37 in the first half. <laughs> it was like every little thing ticked him off. And like that's kind of how I, after watching that, it was like yeah. everything like came to me. That's like someone's always trying to grab your spot. Like there's always that like target on your back. Right. Like, someone wants it. But are you going to hit it? No, you're not mm -hmm. going to hit it. And so when, when I saw the tweet of, I was running away. I was ducking. I came all the way to RTC Cup and I wrestled so and so. I like took it to heart. And after that, I was like, every single day we wrestle, I'm gonna make your life a living hell, mm. every way possible. And <laughs> that's what happened. I just, I don't like to make things personal, but once you once you come my way in that sense, it, everything changes. Because right. I try to keep it business. We wrestle, we win. You get your hand raised, we celebrate, we leave. But once you go on Twitter and try to start a feud, it's like it triggers the game, the game face, and I'm stuck in it until I see you. Mm. And then when I see you once, and I know I got to wrestle at Big Tens, the first time is a message. And now we get to Big Tens, and now it's like I got to send you another message because I'm going to wrestle you at NCAAs again. Yeah. And now when we get to NCAAs, you're on the biggest stage, and I've beaten you twice in some type of way. Mm -hmm. And now – when I got to wrestle that third time on the biggest stage, now this is where the show comes. Mm. And the show is just a part of the game. It's like, once the show comes out, it's like, it's hard to run away from it. Yeah. That's like a little, it's like a different mentality. Cause so we had a guy in our team <clears throat> who he was number one in the country and he had to beat the same, or he beat the number two guy twice. Mm -hmm. And he ended up not doing well at NCAAs. Yeah. We don't got to talk about that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like he had to wrestle, the, he was gonna have to wrestle the same guy in the finals a third time. Yeah. And it's like, like, are we? Is it harder to beat the guy a third time? <clears throat> Even though you know you beat him twice, but it's like everybody, people say like, it's hard to beat a guy it, two times in a row, <clears throat> three times in a row. Yeah. It it is hard to beat a guy three times in a row because he knows what you're gonna do, and they game plan the whole time just so you can wrestle him in the NCAA finals and he can squeak out a takedown and not wrestle it for the rest of the match. Yeah. But that burned in me to see people like talk about it, like could he come close? And every time someone mentioned it, I was like, nope. And so I would I would call in late at night and I'd be like, let's go in, let's go to practice, like let's wake up and lift, mm. let's wake up and do this. It would be Sunday and I'd be like, let's go in, because I never wanted no one, I never wanted no one to catch up. And so I was going six days a week, Monday through Saturday, and I would go wrestle the duel on Sunday, Sunday after the duel, right back. Jeez right back and never stopped i was doing it for years straight and just because people would go on the internet and be like hey 
this number two guy in the country says he can beat Gable, and I was looking at him like, mm -mm. Mm. no, I'm never I, like you like. You just take things like person. Like I know you said you didn't, you don't take it personally, but like you take it personally, like that you want to be at the top. Like you want. Oh, I go straight guy. to the heart. Yeah, straight to the heart. Every time, every time a, a coach came out and he was like, "Hey, I think your guy's ready," I was like, mm. <laughs> "Personal," because <laughs> like just like like I mentioned Michael Jordan last dance, it was like everything someone said about him not being great, like he wanted to change it, mm. and every time someone said something about. Gable didn't look ready. Gable looked tired. Yeah. So the next match, I went out there and I shot a hundred times on purpose, just so like people would be like, "Oh, he's that man." <laughs> and now you see that, and it's like, okay, yeah. now no one can catch up. So I wanted to get to the point where people were like, "You can't touch him." Sure. And so I was going day after day, morning, evening, morning, evening. My whole sophomore year, I was going seven a.m., four a.m., or four p.m. Mm -hmm. Every day. Do you, um, with that mentality, because that's something like that's just in you, or can you develop that? <clears throat> Did you just improve like on that? You can develop it. It's just if you have that in you and you can rearrange it to have a positive way instead of like being angry at everybody. Mm. I feel like I rearranged it to have like a positive influence on like, hey, Gable was going so hard that people had to look at it on the team and they're like, can I do the same thing? Yeah. And I wanted like to, to like kind of like start like a cult of like, Gable was going <clears throat> so hard. He was different. His attitude was different. And then I wanted the NCAA like, wrestling community to like, follow it. Because mm. once they followed it, now people are looking at NCAA wrestling as like it's slowly growing and growing and picking up. And I just – it wasn't – it was personal. It's just hard to explain. It, was, it yeah. was personal, but it was like – it was personal in a sense of I didn't want to – I didn't want to backfire in any way on anybody in a, in a bad way and talk bad about them, but it yeah. was personal, like a business sense of like, if you're going to speak about me, I'm going to, I'm feeding it right yeah. back to you, but I'm going to feed it back to you in a way that you can't respond. And so when it's just, it's, it's just, it's a game and I like playing games. And yeah. like, once you play that mind game and <clears throat> like I said, how the haircut, you come out there fresh and people are looking at you like, Oh, like now you got the whole crowd and like the aura is waiting for you to wrestle. Mm -hmm. And now once you see, like, <clears throat> I was walking out on the mat my last year for NCAAs, and the whole crowd was, it just felt like they were just sitting on top of me. Because, mm. like, you walk out there with that swag, that that talk, that, that motivation. Now yeah. people are like, yeah. <laughs> and that's what you wanted. And so it was cool. Huh. Was it, uh, is it, like, more nerve-wracking? I guess, like, you obviously have, like, supreme confidence and, like, everything, but... <clears throat> Was it more nerve wracking walking out for like your first WWE event, or more for like your first national finals, or for Olympic finals even? Definitely, um, <clears throat> WWE is a hard, uh, it's a tough one just because you ain't character. You gotta you gotta keep keep going forward in that sense, and you gotta make sure you're playing your role the right way. And um, the fans are different; they can talk to you on the side. You got def you got fan interaction mm -hmm. that you got to get a hold of. You got to gravitate the crowd. You got to look the right way and you can't look the wrong way because there's too many people watching you now. And if you, if you turn your back the wrong way, someone's going to comment about it. But I don't, I don't pay attention to any comments, um, yeah. any reviews, as long as the people above say everything's going well, then I, then their words the best, but going out for the Olympic finals, it was, it was odd because it was like, okay, I made it this far. I mean, you can get second. You still don't like <laughs> silver, but I mean, do you just want to break down to the match? Mm. <clears throat> we can just break down the sure. match. Sure. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Match. yeah. So I get out there and I'm up 4 0, and it's like, I'm like, damn, I'm about to win. I'm like, holy hell. Like, I have no, <laughs> no one's taking me down the whole tournament. Jeez. And then next thing you know, I get rolled. And I'm like, okay, like, it's still 5 2, like, we're cruising. And the next period comes, and I get taken down and rolled like four times, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" Like, <laughs> second place don't seem too bad right now. And I'm looking at Eggham in the corner, and I'm like, "What do you want me to do?" He's like, "Just keep wrestling hard." And there's about forty seconds left, and I get into a little stalemate spot, and I'm just like, "Yeah, this is probably done." I'm already down eight to five. I was like, "There's no chance." Mm. Second's not bad, but <clears throat> like I said, like. That little like competitiveness. Yeah, I was like, I flew, four. I flew twelve hours to win, not lose. Yeah, and so like that 
you get them second thoughts in a match of like, I'm this far, yeah. why stop? Sure. And so I was like, I'm this far, and I was like, I can't get second. And so when I took him down in like five, like two seconds, I was like, I'm gonna cut him, and I, hopefully the ref lets him lets me yeah. up. And he when he let us up, I was like, no way. <laughs> and so like my whole like thought process changed. So I was like, I have six seconds to score, and it was, I was like, there's, I, I'm about to win. I looked in his eyes, and like you can kind of like see, um, if you watch the video back, it's like me with my hands yeah. on my knees. Mm-hmm. And I like nudge him with my head to have him stand up because he was, I felt like you smell the blood. Yeah. And I nudged him and I was like, and in my head, I was like, I'm about to do it. And it was crazy. And I snapped him down. And once I felt his feet move and his hands were heavy, I was like, it's going to happen. <laughs> and I spun and I spun and I looked at the clock and it was like 0.03 or two. Sure. Yeah. And I was like, no way. And after that, <laughs> it was like, did you think you could already win the Olympics? Like a- after you won that national championship, yeah, really. I had like um, because guys haven't seen me on a senior level, yeah. and so when you're new to it, like nobody knows who you are. Um, you can strike them how you want to, mm-hmm. and I knew guys like Agul and Zaire from Iran and Petrus Vili were gonna be the the best the best guys to win, and so once um, once that everything came out and like who I was gonna wrestle, I was like I can win, yeah. And I I waited to wrestle Agul for like years now. And, like, that competitive side came mm-hmm. out, and I was, like, I was in the back, like, yeah, we waited for this. Yeah. And because you got to stand next to the guy when you come out. Oh, yeah. And I was, we were in the back, and no one could see us, and he was sitting next to me, and I'm sitting here, and I was, like, yeah, we waited for this. And I was, <laughs> I was like, I was looking at him, talking to talk, and I was telling Egg, I'm, like, in brand, but I was, like, oh, yeah, it's been years. And so when I went out there, it was, like, the biggest boost of energy. Sure. And right when I felt him, I was, like, oh, yeah, we can do it. You know how you feel somebody yeah, in a match, yeah. and it's, like, yeah. You know how to work it. Yeah. It was like that, that just side comes out. It's like it's always a show. It's weird. Yeah. Now that now that you won the Olympics, is there like a secret group chat you Olympic champs are in or no. how does that work? <laughs> I haven't talked to them guys in a long time. No. I, I, I try to stay in touch with um a few of them, you know, but they got their own things. They yeah, got their families. Absolutely. They got 100%. their their jobs going on and stuff. But I mean, once I see them it'll be right back to where we were. But mm. for now it's just I just haven't saw them. Yeah. Sweet. Do you think your like your faith plays a role in, in any of your like your wrestling or in, in your life at all? Has that played a role? You know, I definitely um, I believe, and I I, I don't go out and speak sure. about it just because it's it's not me. Sure. You know, behind the scenes, I'll be hey, you know, we we do our praises and we do our, um, our ways certain, and everyone does it certain type of ways. But mm-hmm. I, me going out on an interview or saying I praise God and this and this, mm-hmm. it's just not who I am. But I I believe that God is a thing and He's real and. He protects everybody in their own sure. way, and but other than that, it's just it's just not something that I've spoke about. So yeah. it's just, it's just hard for me to get behind and go on an interview and yeah. say my two cents oh. when I don't really have any two cents. So. Sure, that makes sense. But oh. I know um, they just uh, Aaron Brooks went on an interview and said that yeah that he praises in everything else and <laughs> do you see him? Yeah, <laughs> so tired. <laughs> um, so. I mean, yeah, everyone's got their own beliefs, and sure. I, 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 it's a topic that I can't speak about yeah. just because I just don't know that much. Yeah, no, 100%. Just wondering. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of the national champs like had, like, you know, David Carr is big into that, um, shares his Bible verses, and I yeah. just didn't know how you that. can You can tell that there's, like, a following behind it. Yeah. But I think um, if, you're, if you're ever going to get behind um, a camera and talk about beliefs and stuff like that, sure. I think you just give your word and, yeah. and leave it. 100%. There's yeah. no... There's no other way to do it. I think people try to dig too deep and force mm. it. Yeah, no. And forcing it can be hard because now you got a you got a whole different side of people that are looking at it, and you got to weigh out the options. Do I want to force it when this side might not believe in it? Or do I just want to mm-hmm. give my thanks and leave? It's a, yeah. It's a, it, that's a hard game to play because yeah. you got to know how to talk and you got to know how to do an interview the right way. You got to know how to stop. And sometimes after a match, your heart's beating, your adrenaline's rushing, and you just like go on a ramble for ten <laughs> yeah. minutes about I'm thinking eighty people when yeah. you don't even know eighty people. And so sense. that's why on like interviews, especially like at the tournaments, I just try to keep it as short as possible, just case mm-hmm. I mean I think mom, dad, my brother, I mean who else? Like at the end of the day, if you're not gonna you gotta thank eighty other people mm-hmm. because the little guy that gave you a pencil in school is like, what happened to me? So it's <laughs> right. like, bro, you gave me pencil in school. I, so I get it. It be it, it's in and out. It's not too hard. Interesting. 
It's interesting. How do you did you watch the whole NCAAs this year, or most of it? Most of it. I watched um, I watched on the TV, but they don't they don't put all the matches up. Yeah. Unless it's like you gotta buy like yeah. ESPN Plus. Yeah. And you, yeah. ESPN Sixty dollars is a lot, match. bro. Yeah. Sixty dollars is crazy. <laughs> 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 Sixty dollars is crazy, but um. I, I like they would put all the number one guys up. So like I watched Brooks and Soraki and all the guys I'm friends with, and I cheered them on, and they all did good. I mean, it's sad for Roman to to go out that way against Vito, but man, hell of a job by by Vito yeah. to to do that. And yeah, he, he I didn't know he was that good. He looked good. Like he's fast. And it's crazy because we were on we were on Cadet World teams like back in 2016, <laughs> and he was always just athletic like that. And finally, he he showed it to the world like. Yeah. He can do it, and so it was good for him, for sure. I think it was interesting that he was saying that um, his goal is, you know, never to be an NCAA champ, but an Olympic champ. Mm -hmm. Like, where do you see that for, like, for him? I can see him doing it. Yeah. Look at the athleticism <laughs> and the speed. Like, it's one of a kind. You can yeah. you can tell when someone has it in, but he's in a spot that he's in the middle. Yeah, it's either he goes down to Thomas Gilman, or he's gonna feed up to Yanni and what was it, Jordan Oliver last time? But Jordan Oliver is in Bellator now. Mm -hmm. And it's um it's a that's a tough game to play because do you want to go up and you might be slower or do you want to go down and you might not have the endurance to last mm -hmm. with Gilman because Gilman sits at that weight all year sure and that's um that's a hard game to play too huh what do you think's next for uh for Spencer get his knees done again yeah <laughs> he's got man I feel again. bad for him oh I, I did I, I like I don't even know how it happened in the first place but it's like. He struggled from high school all the way through college yeah. now. It's it was just a constant thing of his body just not catching up to yeah. where he was. And Spencer's great. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, like, Spencer won the national tournament. He's probably the – he's one of the best wrestlers in collegiate history ever. I mean, he had, like, the bonus point rate to be the oh, best, right? Yeah. If he would have won. Yep. And he was up there. And it's like, for him to go out that way, it sucks. But, I mean, you can't blame him. You can't blame no. a guy from – going for his fourth NCAA title to getting stuck and when he shouldn't have got stuck and he gets caught on his back, he's pinned and, and he forfeits out the rest of the tournament. Shit, I mean, 99% of the people probably would have forfeited out the oh, tournament. Yeah, yeah. You can't blame him for forfeiting no, out. I, I, that was the main thing people were saying. Like, well, just wrestle back at third, but it's like... No, it, it don't work <laughs> like that. It don't work, yeah, it don't in, work in like real that. life, you got the people that are like, oh, like, excuses are for what's his. But I mean, you get in that spot and you got to lose and... You're going for your fourth national title, and you're in a weight class that he should blow out. Sure. And it's like, you lose. Now it's like, what am I doing here? Mm. And he, I mean, everyone probably would have hit the wall. He was probably already at the wall years ago. Yeah. And he sat out last year to try to come back this year, and he was already at the wall. You can tell, like, when someone, especially in college wrestling, you go in for six years. The guys that go in for their, you see, seventh and eighth years come back, they're not as good as they were just because they mm. don't want to go through the the drag, the grind yeah, the of gauntlet, just the gauntlet of wrestling big ten duels every week and and you you can tell when someone is finally like I bet right now it's probably the biggest sigh of relief for him mm -hmm. just because he is done with college. He's done with yeah. folk style wrestling yeah. and he's done with the guys playing the edge on him. Instead of freestyle you can just push him out and you can walk back to the center. Sure. It's one zero. That's a good point. But I bet you he's He's relieved, and I know it sucks for him, and it sucks they put his mom on the camera too. Yeah, yeah, that was, but that was weird. I, don't I saw know that people it, just that was just odd to put but, it on camera. Like I like we just said, everybody's mom would react like that. 100. And yeah. they're like, oh, put your mom in a private it's spot. It's real life. Yeah, it's That's real life. Real. That's a real game. Like he, and is, it, nothing's ever been like happened like this. So we don't know how it would ever even go. No, no she had no clue. Happened. No. And so they they put her out there and talking about his mom's a sort of loser and stuff, but. In some sense, yeah, but at the end of the day, shit, your kid's going for four national titles. Yeah. He's not supposed to lose. Yeah. But he got caught. And that's, like I said, it's just the that's game we play. I took an L. I took a couple of L's. And it's like I got pinned at Junior Worlds in 2018 before I went to Minnesota. And <laughs> yeah. I didn't medal. It was like, it happens to everybody. That's why it's so crazy for someone to win four, stay healthy, and just yeah. win. Look how long it took Yanni. Yeah. So like Yanni, eight years, yeah. twenty years or something. <laughs> years. Yeah, it for took real. Yanni like twenty years to win four national title because he sat out like three years. And I think um, that's where the game in NCAs gets a little gets a little weird, yeah. just because guys have the have the leverage to go Olympic red shirt, red mm -hmm. shirt, um, gray shirt. That's yeah. three years, and now it's with like, the COVID year too. I mean, yeah, with the COVID year, that's four free years. 
And now you got kids coming back for an eighth year, and it's like, when is it? When do you feel like your time is ready to go to freestyle? Mm-hmm. And but Yanni, he's fantastic though. But it's like, just the amount of time it took for him to win four is is crazy. Just because yeah. all the time, the two years of COVID, the Olympic, and it's just the time consuming is different. And he's got to go through the grind for six years. Yeah. And then people don't understand how really rough it is. Mm. Yeah. Were you? Um. This is kind of not related to what we're talking about, but after you won like your national championships, Olympic gold, were you ever like treated differently just by people? I'm sure like not your family and friends, but like maybe teachers or uh, anything. My, after I won the Olympics, I came back to, and I was like, all right, I'll go back to school. I showed up to every class. Yeah. Like I never, I never skipped the class. I'm sure um, everyone in the class knew who you were and knew what happened. I feel like they knew, but I just showed up and I just, they like did. it was a regular day. Yeah. I showed up like it was eight 15 and I showed up just, I would ask teachers questions, and I would get on the Zoom calls. Like when yeah. I tell you, like I never, my last semester I didn't miss one class, and then the first semester I probably just missed like one or two, mm-hmm. just like because you know you can't go to all of them. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but so I my second half, the one of the academic ladies was like, "You need this class to graduate," and I was like, "I right, is it online?" She's like, "No, it's in person." So I was like, "Damn it!" First of all, because now I gotta show up, and now. Mm-hmm. They're like, all the classes are in person. And so I had to go to five in-person classes. And my first test, it was like history of communication. And mm. communication classes, you kind of get like the, oh, like, what do you think about this? How do you think about this adjective or this word? This one was like, <clears throat> what's the radio signal in 1930 and how did it come to play in your life? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, bro, what well, are you talking about radio signal? I, I feel like so many classes are like that, too. Yeah. It'd be, it's but crazy. I, it's, and I'm like... It's just the, just make it a communication yeah. class. And so we're going over like um, segregation and how communication was different back then. And I'm like, yo, I got no clue. So our first test comes, it's like 100 points. I get 20 out of 100. <laughs> and so I go to the academic lead. I'm like, yo, I got to drop it. Can I drop it and get like easier class? Yeah. And she's like, no, you need this one to graduate. It's a part of your, it's a part of your A pass. If you don't do this, you don't graduate. Jeez. And so <clears throat> then the teacher comes back and she's like, you get two tests to drop. I was like, okay, we good. Mm. And the next test I show up, I get a 40. 40, <laughs> 40 oh, no. At least you're getting better. <laughs> so, I'm like, so I'm like, hey, I'm getting better, but I have no more tests to drop. And so it, it was like a thing of like, this was the first time I ever took notes in the class. Mm. So I was showing up every morning, like 20 minutes early to find a good spot up front. Like I bought a, I had like a, Bought a notebook. I got pencils and everything. I was like, I have to. And so, like, I was in there taking notes after notes. And they're, like, two pages long. First time ever. This was the first time ever I went to, like, I understand the college school grind. Yeah. Because all my other classes were, like, hey, what do you think about um, leadership and how does leadership affect you in a sport? And I was like, oh, that's easy. Mm -hmm. And then you got the economic classes that you got to show up to. But my senior year, I never missed a class. I showed up and did notes in all the classes just because, like, I wanted to have that feeling of, like, being a real student yeah. and not being, like, the kid that won the Olympics and, and he don't show up in, no yeah. more. Because you get that. You get that with a lot of other sports. I mean, basketball yeah. and football. Well, it's almost like you'd think that would happen. But, I mean, that's cool that you just showed up, like, just normal day. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to. I, yeah. I wanted to feel like I was a part of school. And, you know, when you, when you finally do school where you feel good in your own – head and you're like okay yeah. i can do this yeah and so i want i want to try it and after that i was like hey cool and the teachers like applaud me for showing up and uh, the few of them would email me and they they would email me last year like after school too and were like man we appreciate you showing up and i was like damn like they really cared that i showed up and i was like i didn't have to show up but man i showed up to every class yeah monday tuesday wednesday thursday Jeez. I, mean, I think yeah. I, that speaks mountains to just you know not who just like what you've done, but like who you are as a person. So not for sure, man. I appreciate that's it. That's awesome. Did you ever think that you were actually gonna use your major? <laughs> like, because obviously yeah. Caden's in the school. He does like. Yeah, I'm I'm, actually... I'm all online school, and I yeah. just try to not do as much school as I can. <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Um, the the major that I'm in business and I got a business and communication degree. Um, it's two majors that combined into one. Mm-hmm. I tried to get into the the business school, but they declined me. But I met all the requirements, so I was like. Hey, they don't gonna, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll move on to the next. Yeah. So I went to this pro- program called CCAP so we can pick like a major. So I got business communication. I graduated from it. And I was like, if I need it, if anything went wrong in wrestling, like I can tell people, like, hey, I have a degree in 
this and this and mm-hmm. I can start off from there and go somewhere with it. And my main goal was I wanted the paper. Like people were like, Oh, you can leave you can leave um school and go go do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But like I, I just wanted the paper. Right. And it was like that itch of like if someone came up to me and was like, You didn't graduate, I'd be like, Damn. And it yeah. was always like that that weird side of me. And so when I got that paper I was like, You can't tell me none. Yeah. Nothing. That's true. Like, where'd you graduate from here? I got it right here. And so I, I that's always the one thing I wanted. I, I didn't care about the classes. I didn't care about anything else. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to pass and I wanted the, the degree because like, it felt like I accomplished something. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of kids nowadays are so obsessed with NIL money. Um, how can you be famous in college? How can you walk into the bars and have people take pictures with you? Like, that's cool, but... I just wanted the paper. Yeah. I was like, I didn't care about nothing else. I didn't care about nobody, nobody, how no one felt about it. I was like, give yeah. me the diploma and let me leave. <laughs> and that was all. And I got it. And I was like, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Now forever, I could tell you, like, I graduated. Yeah. From University of Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. No matter how much slang I say, no matter how goofy I talk or how funny I look or how funny I talk and my word choice. Yeah. You can't tell me nothing because I had that paper. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Sure. With, with like getting accomplishments and everything, have you ever accomplished something, whether in wrestling or I don't think school, but that you felt unsatisfied? Like you didn't, you won everything, you got it, but you didn't feel satisfied? Unsatisfied? Yeah. Oh, man. Because that's like the ultimate failure I've heard like Tony Robbins say, you accomplish something, but you don't feel satisfied, it's the ultimate failure. And like for me, like when I won state in high school, it was great for a week. And I was like, wait, like what now? like okay go to college now it's almost like <clears throat> not I that think, i wasn't happy for it but i just didn't know if you had any no for like sure that. i think everything everything, everything like ncas olympics like you i always have like the itch of like i can do it again mm. and there's always like that that like thirst that comes out of like um do it again do it again yeah. do it again and I, every time i won a tournament it was like i could do it better and like that always like clicked in my mind of like, how bad could I be the guy the next time? Mm. And there was always like that unsatisfactory of like, can I beat him again the same way, worse? Mm. And so I think every tournament. But you know you get satisfied. Hey, I won. You won the Olympics. You won the state tournament. You won the national yeah. tournament. It's like oh, it's a great thing. But I w- I always thought about it as like once I stepped off, it was like, I would tell the coaches like, what was wrong with it? That's and right. they would look at me and be like. Well, you could have circled this way better. And I was like, All right, we're gonna do it. Mm. And it was like every single time. I'm I'm big on like Kobe Bryant and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that's why you were saying just the, how often you were practices. Like he says, if you wake up at four, go in, go at noon, go at six p.m. Man, at night. Everything. You got three more practices. You're Boy, gonna be Mayweather. Like, yeah. Um, it's no secret why they're so good. It's no secret why no, you're so good. It's it's just I always had that like thirst of like how could I do it again, but like look better on my body. How could I do it again? But my vein popped out this way for the camera. <laughs> yeah, right. It was always like, it was just, it was like a fun deal of like, how can I push my mind to hit a step that no one thought it could hit? Yeah. How long afterwards, after you won the Olympics, did it take you to get back in the room? I was low key right back in. I was like immediately, we, we, we were taking like, we were doing like a media tour and we were going to see um, WWE and Bellator, PFL. Um, I missed Dana White just by a little bit because I had to go to SummerSlam. But right when I won the Olympics, I probably took a week off. Mm-hmm. I came home and it, I was flooded with media for like two days straight because yeah. I was trying to push the narrative of how can my stock just keep going and going yeah. and going. And then uh, Egan was like, do you want to wrestle again? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to wrestle again, but I need, to, I need to play the game for a little bit. Right. And he was like, okay, cool. Just That's all I needed to know. And so like, probably like two weeks later, I, probably like the next couple of days, I started lifting again. Mm. And then like probably five, seven days later, I was back in the room, like wow. just drilling. Yeah. But it's just, it's just things I'd never post out there because like guys like – they like to take the media and run with it and, and change the narrative like, oh, Gable's already already back doing this. He's not ready for this. And so I, I try to keep a lot of things like just by myself. And I'll post like Instagram pictures of, hey, I'm, I'm training and 
But I give no context. Yeah. It's just there. It's yeah. just whatever you choose. Leaves you to wonder. Yeah. Whatever you well, choose to say about it, you say. Yeah. And we were um we were also looking up like if you did any other podcasts and stuff on like YouTube. Yeah. And I see you did you know had some of them with DC. And like other than that, Probably it was like take, yeah, 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 it was almost yeah. it's almost like a mystery. Like yeah. I was I, I was, love the mystery. Yeah. I love it. Like it's um I just love I, I, I don't like Instagram, but I like posting pictures because like I like what cameras can do is like so yeah. cool and I'm fascinated by how cool a camera can make you look. Yeah. I like to put on I like to go to the mall and I like to buy clothes and take pictures and like hey, like but in a competitive standpoint, it's all I like to keep it a mystery. Mm-hmm. And like some people once once you show up at a thing and they're like, Damn, like he's been doing the right thing. Yeah. And they look at you and it's like, Oh, it's like a luxury. I was always told like being seen less, and then when somebody finally sees you, it's like a luxury to see you, mm. just because yeah, it makes sense. They'd never seen you before. Now it's like, oh, it's Caden, and he's from YouTube, but I've never seen him before. Mm. He doesn't go out to the bar. He don't go to the club. <laughs> you don't see him. You don't see him hanging with nobody. He's just at home. And now when you finally go somewhere, people are like, damn, I've never seen him before. I don't. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Like I almost feel like one of implementing that or implementing do it. that. Do yeah. it, and, do it, and see how different things change. Because now, like, well, and put it in the work too. I mean, it's you're just like silent, this. like, yeah. And I'll post videos of me wrestling on Instagram. I did a couple days ago, and it's um, it's like, oh, he's coming back. But how do you know that? I didn't say that. Can you get some backlash for posting? I your, do. Your yeah. highlights. People are like, like, why are you trying to like clown on these oh. guys when they're wrestling? Yeah, I post yeah. highlights of me wrestling in it, though, like. And I just post it with no caption. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, hey, here's a video of me wrestling. And it'll be like a couple hundred, <laughs> it'll be like a couple hundred thousand views and people be in the comments like, oh, why are you posting about this? And I'm like, I just posted a video so you can have the entertainment of watching someone wrestle. Yeah. I didn't say nothing about this guy's bad, this yeah. guy's bad. I just people say, love conspiracy, yeah. th- conspiracy theories. I just push it and I'd be like, hey, here, you can run with it, you can do what you want. And I, I post videos of me wrestling all the time. But I never give context. I never say, hey, I'm wrestling at this tournament. I'm doing this. My WWE event is this. Mm -hmm. And I haven't tweeted in a year just because I like that suspense. Yeah. I like when you finally see it. It's like, damn. It's like, like, geez, like he showed up. Yeah. And so I think you should should try it, bro. Interesting. That is very interesting. It's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. Like, because you don't, I don't go to, I don't go to no bar. Like Mm -hmm. I have my dogs, like. I can't leave him alone for too long because yeah. he, he's attached. Look at him. And he's <laughs> yeah, attached yeah. too. And it's like, you get that you get that feeling of like people wondering like, where you at? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you don't know where I'm at. Because I'm like, I like to be like Batman. <laughs> that is like Batman. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. It's a like secret. So, but now that you're on the podcast, you're just going to take another break? Oh, yeah. You, you, break? Won't see me again. <laughs> you won't see me again unless like, I, I like to do, I like to do media and I like yeah. to do like, like, like ESPNs and stuff yeah. like that. Cause that, that pushes like the word out faster. Mm. But in that, like, I don't, there's, I would, I've never done a podcast unless it was like after the Olympics. Yeah. Other than that, I'll just go ghost. I'll show up to matches and like people be like, why are you at matches? I'll be like, Hey, I wanted to watch, but you never know. I might show up the next mm. one. I might wrestle. So I like being like just a ghost. Yeah. I, I, Instagram is fun just because I like taking pictures. I like, Hey, he's got a cool outfit from this or mm. he's working out here or, He's hanging out with this person. But other than that, like, there's no context behind it. You'll yeah. never know how I got there, when I left, if you, I'm still there. Yeah. Do you ever, like, dress up, like, in a disguise if you go out? No. no. <laughs> it's not that deep because I don't go nowhere. Sure. sure. I like to. But, I like, like to, everyone around here has got to know you. Like, I, in the subdivision, I everyone's got to know, like, an Olympic champ lives here. I think a few people, like, saw my commercial on TV for the Super Bowl. Okay. And they that's how they found out that I was living here. But <laughs> I think other than that, like... I like to be as anonymous as possible. Yeah. yeah. That's so and I think awesome. once I leave, like, once I get to a point that I can leave the subdivision, I think I want to, I want, I told um, my girlfriend that I, I would like to go live in, like, a spot that no one can find me. Yeah. Well, I, I hear some YouTubers say that they'll do, like, the whole YouTube game, media game, and make their money, and then just, like, just once leave. you have that, just leave. Just have your family, have your kids, whatever you want to do, just live your life. I have, I have, like, a set schedule on, like, when I wanted to, like, disappear. Yeah, and I, like things I wanted to accomplish before I did, and it was like I wanted to be WWE champion. Mm-hmm. I wanted to win the Olympics again, um, UFC champion, and then I just wanted to like scatter. Yeah. And if I had to do it twice, I'd do it twice. If I got to be ten time WWE champion, hey, I'm <laughs> showing up ten times and I'll defend the belt. But I think mm. 
having that suspicion of like not having no one bother you. Yeah. You know, you get to a point where you go out on a campus and people know who you are and then you get so caught up in, man, I want to have people know who I am. Yep. I, I just like the suspicion, like the, the sus- what is it called? A suspicion. Yeah, yeah. I thought there was like a word called suspicion, but it's not a word called <laughs> suspicion. <laughs> it's, it's really cool just to have like, just be yeah. nowhere. Yeah. I'm you, everywhere but nowhere. And I like that. Do you have like a, like the timeline, like how old you want to be when you're like 30, 30 and then you're gone? Mm-hmm. Wow. 30s to, That's not 30 a lot of to time. mid-30s. Or I guess it is a lot of time, but it's like not it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time, but it's not a lot of time. Yeah. But mm. if you think realistically, I mean, with the with the right work and the right yeah. uh, mindset, with the right yeah. touch, with the right business, you can you can go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, I'm in a spot that I feel like I can go to many places. I can do well in many spots. And I believe myself. Mm-hmm. Like once, you, once you don't believe in yourself, you'll never go nowhere. And I've always dreamed about being the guy in a, in a company and showing the world that I can do things that they say I can't. Mm. But I never dreamed about being in the media and being famous. Mm-hmm. I never wanted it's that. It's just a product of it. Yeah, it's just a, it just comes with the game. I just wanted to be... Um, I just wanted to win and leave. Yeah, That's all. I don't want nothing else. I just wanted to have us live a good life and just... If you needed me, you can call. But I got to get to that point, and I know I do. Yeah. But that's just my end goal. Like, I probably want to do like you know Yellowstone. Yeah. Yeah, I want to be like Yellowstone. <laughs> you want to be ranch. like the, the Gable. Ranch. You want to be like that, like in the not the killing part, but <laughs> <laughs> not the killing part, but man, like the Yellowstone Ranch. Look at it. Like you wake up and you got a and you got all these mountains next to you, and you yeah. got a river, yeah. you got a lake that sits next to you. Man, like imagine. I want to listen. You want to stay just, in Minnesota. I would like to stay in Minnesota. I mean, I would like to have a place somewhere else. Yeah. Um, I just don't know where. But I would like to stay in Minnesota. I would like to go to the lake and live on the lake. Mm-hmm. You gotta. We gotta get to a point. We're gonna. We're gonna do everything it takes to to live a happy life. And. Mm-hmm. But I think, I wanna have like my own cattle and stuff. Really? Like my own chickens. Yeah, my own cattle. My own like food stores. Yeah. Yeah, I've always wanted to have that. It's like, why not? Yeah. I wanna be able to like get on a plane get on a jet, fly to an airport, and I live like Yellowstone. And like, I don't even have to pick up the phone. That's crazy. I would have never expected that, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I did not think so either. But, I mean, it kind of makes sense. I like to be, I like the city too. But, you know, like, man, just like, think about it. Yeah. You got this big ranch. Yeah. Well, and you know what? You don't hear about it because those people are away. You don't know where yeah, they are. that's true. Yeah, you don't know where they are. So it's like, I've always wanted to have like this, you know, I don't have to answer the phone. Right. I just wanted to be like anonymous. Yeah. And just have a river, have a lake next to me, have a boat planted there. I can surf when I want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I just go in and just ride the horses home. Yeah. So it's cool. It's awesome. So that's all I want. Like, yeah. Some people want a big penthouse in a city. That's cool, but you can only be in the city so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you see the same people. You see the same. Things and <clears throat> the less people I talk to, I feel like the more I like it. Yeah, I don't mind talking to people, but then you got to repeat the. You got if I talk to you, I got to repeat yeah, what I yeah. said to you to him, and it's like it gets repetitive. Oh yeah, right. Why it's not exhausting. Just, and why not just be on your own? So yeah. that time will come. Yeah. So uh, with your when you did like all the media after you won the Olympics, who was like the coolest guy to you that you ever, like you met on that tour? Man. Um, Vince McMahon. <laughs> really? Yeah, Vince McMahon was like, come to um, come to SummerSlam. I was like, damn, Vince McMahon texting. So that was like the biggest, like, wow, like, you've, you've made it. Yeah. You made it to a spot that, like, Vince McMahon sees you. And we flew on a private jet. I landed. I got off the plane. I went to SummerSlam. Vince McMahon, he was like, come into my office. He was like, my bad, Gable. I'm sorry. I'm late. You know, I got a deep, brassy <laughs> voice. He did a little walk. He was like, I'm sorry. I'm late. And I was like... It's okay. I mean, you could have took hours. I still would have been here. Mm. And I talked to him. And that was cool. You know, it's... You don't see guys like Dana White. And you don't see guys like Vince McMahon. And Paul Levesque, Triple H. And and all those guys walking around. So when you see, like, WWE legends in person, it's like, damn, like, I'm real life seeing them. Yeah. Stone Cold came up to me and talked to me. And he was like, man, we watched your Olympic finals. It was great. 
Um, you're gonna do great things, and I was like, dang, like I was like, bro, you know you're stone cold, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. Like, you, you're the broken skull, not <laughs> not me. And he came up to me, and I was like, wow, like mm. that right there, him and a few others, and like meeting with Vince, like like it re clicked my mind to you got to keep going. Yeah. And like at the Olympics, it's like, hey, you made it, but I was just at the bottom of the stone. Yeah. There's a whole another boulder to get across. And when I saw that, and I was like, I got re, I got re motivated and retouched again. Yeah, by far. That's awesome. We gotta give him the thing. Oh yeah, yeah, we gotta. Oh, I got it. I got it. So, um, Brady Shoe here, our cameraman here. Yeah. Uh he he has this big. Uh, his parents have this uh, shop that they do, the metal cutting and stuff. And Shoe, what is it? He, he designed this. For you specifically, for so this is for guests, for the guests on the Clash of Combat podcast. Oh, Put this on a mantle or whatever. Oh yeah. So it's number it two. So you Damn, have it's the, heavy. Yeah. yeah. So you have, you have the number one. Each one will be numbered. You're the only one this with that. This is the first one. one. It's the first one. Yeah, we are gonna hang this up. Yeah. <laughs> I probably put it in my um my Xbox room upstairs. Yeah. And then you can put it right in there. It sits all all nice. Oh, so it sits like this. Uh, so put, you put, put the bottom put the on bottom it. In the Put the bottom, the bottom in the put hole. This piece in the little hole. Oh, yep. And you can set up on the table. One of one. Oh, other, other way. way. <laughs> <But> yeah. <laughs> Should we put it on the table right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. You can put it on the table. There yeah. you go. Oh, that's cool. I like put it in my my Xbox room. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So thank you, thank you, Brady. Yeah. No, thanks, Brady. Shout shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Um. You like I feel like there's it? so much to talk about. Dude, there is. Yeah. I feel like I, I could go like, on forever. I feel like I don't. I don't talk. I don't talk about nothing to anyone. So it's like I feel like I have like a million things. To what say. El- What else do you got like going on for you? Man, I I still am amateur wrestling. I I do more pro wrestling than amateur. Um, but what's been the hardest thing to like? Is it? I'm sure your body's like used to it, but it was like, is it different? Like, oh, it's get, very different. Yeah, it's very different. Um, being able to to talk. Mm-hmm. And talking a sense of that you gotta sell yourself because we're so used to talking in, in a sense of like, hey, shout out to my team, shout out to everyone else. But yeah. now I can go on an interview and be like, yeah, I'm the Olympic gold medalist, I'm <laughs> the baddest guy in this WWE roster, and you yeah. can't mess with me, and nobody else can mess with me. And now it's like, oh, you're selling yourself. But mm-hmm. like an amateur style, it's like, oh, he's arrogant, like he's not mm-hmm. good for the sport. Yeah. Like, look at Car- Carter Starakis, uh yeah. After he won the NCAs, he's like, man, I'm the, ba- people out, I'm the baddest dude here. I-, I can win the Olympic gold. I can win UFC gold. We see that as, oh, he's arrogant. He's thinking too much. But in the eye of WWE, it's, it's selling a product. That's yeah. a game. Yeah. You're selling a product. And until amateur wrestling fans let people sell their product, we, that'll never, that step will never jump. Mm. So you, you think know that's, what I mean? That's just a great way to grow wrestling is like, you got to you gotta let kids talk. Yeah. You gotta let kids talk. And I mean, that, that's like uh, how people when the UFC started, like Conor McGregor, he was the first one to start like really talking, and that's what blew it up. Yeah, like no, that's true, and that's like somebody just gotta be the Conor McGregor. Of yeah, wrestling. you wouldn't think of him as like you know the UFC goat. Maybe some people do because if they're Conor McGregor fans, but <laughs> like dude's got following out of nowhere. Yeah, and, and I mean the image he sells is. It's Con McGregor. <laughs> I mean, Yo, like, you, can't, you know the name. You yeah. can't, man. You can't even. You can't say no wrong about it. Like, bro, sold everything. Yeah. And I was, we we were buying Irish flags, and I'm not even Irish. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Just to watch him fight, <laughs> it was crazy. And like, man, just looking back on his run, it was like, the way he sold everything, and the way like he brought in, the most revenue streams of all time. It's yeah. like, look at look at him, mm-hmm. but. And That's, he was good. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that he was good. <laughs> he was real good too. But like just like when I talked about that arena aura. Yeah. And like how he like you would walk into the arena and it, it was like, damn, like it's Conor McGregor. Yeah. When the crowd It's Conor yeah. McGregor. Like you cannot you can't say nothing else. And it's gotta suck being the other guy on the other end. And you got the whole media world talking about it's like, hey, you're fighting Conor McGregor, yeah. how do you feel? And it's like that gets old. Yeah. And I and I bet like a lot of people that I've maybe wrestled it got it old for them because it was, hey you got to wrestle Gable how do you feel and you know Flow Wrestling's watching um, Intermat and what Rothkin and yeah. you got now you got celebs that are following me, paying attention to how I'm doing and they see a video of me beating you they have no context on who you are and they comment and be like man you're you're the goat or something <laughs> like that and it's like 
now that kid sees it, and it's like you got. Let's just let's just say like, hey, you got Denzel Washington on Instagram commenting on a picture, and it's like, damn, like Denzel's watching me lose the Gable, and now like the aura comes becomes different because you have famous people watching, and it's like. Yeah. Now, like this year, they had Donald Trump at the NCAAs. Now, imagine him watching you. It's like, yeah. it's crazy. No. That was nuts that he was that there. That was really crazy. That I was random. Yeah. Very random. Yeah, just random. No yeah. one even would thought he just like showed up. And Remember? there's stuff saying that he was going to get arrested on that Tuesday or something. Yeah. He's crazy. <laughs> it's just a weird situation. Yeah. Was... He does whatever he wants. <laughs> but there's this, I mean, there's just so much. There's yeah. so, so much. But. If I if I had one thing to say to the people that watch this video, mm-hmm. man, I would say, where's hard cam? Is that hard camera? The, no. uh, that one. Which one is? That's hard cam? Yeah. The one on the far right, yeah. Man, if I had one thing to say to the people in this video that are going to watch this podcast too, I mean, mm-hmm. believe in yourself 100%. Believe that you can win. Believe that you can be the guy. Believe that you can be a national champ, whether it's D1, D2, D3, NAI, JUCO, whatever it is that you're in. Because that next door is going to open and someone's going to knock and you got to be ready to open that door and bust through it. And so mm-hmm. take care of yourself. For the young kids that watch this that are fans of Caden, I know he's got probably 12-year-olds that watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> That's the YouTube scene nowadays. <laughs> Stay in school. Please keep your eyes and ears open. Listen to the people that are telling you the right things. Don't fall into a bad crowd because once you fall in, it's really hard to get out. Stay strong, stay positive, have great minds, show up to practice, listen to your coaches. There's a lot of things to say, but if Gable's telling you, then I think you should listen. I think you should definitely Damn right. listen. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. This is great. Let's do it. Sweet.